I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. I will do everything I possibly can. That's a glorious goal. That's a great save by Goal. And for Henrik Larsson! That's a great goal. Suck it. That's a golden goal for Celtic. Oh, yes! What a glorious goal for McNamara! A superb strike by the youngster. The left bit of Marocci! A hat-trick for Henrik. A brilliant finish for Marocci! You won't see a better precision finish than this. And Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. What a season. What a season. Bring you some success, said Martin back in June. Some success. Boy, can he understate. It's over 30 years since we last saw the treble at Paradise, when Big Jock achieved it for the second time in 1969. But in just one short season, Martin O'Neill, the man now given the honorary prefix of Saint, has fulfilled our dreams and given us a season of outstanding football and memories that will have us into a barman, make minds a treble pal for many years to come. From start to finish, this season has been immense and overflowing with a kind of resolve and determination that Celtic fans have not seen for years. I'm always proud to be a Celtic fan, as we all are, but this season, the way in which the team have conducted themselves on and off the pitch, picked themselves up when they've been down and played brilliantly match after match, makes us all prouder than ever. In decades to come, fans still to be born wishing they'd been part of the treble winning season of 2000-2001. So that's reason enough to sit down now and enjoy it again. No excuses needed to do this. Let's just relive every moment, every deep breath, every shout, every tear and every cheer as we raise the League Cup, the League Championship and the Scottish Cup. And let's savour every delicious moment. Pre-season began with an air of familiarity all too common to Celtic fans. So many big names were being linked with the football club. Hoos van Hiddink, Bertie Votes, even Vim Janssen. But it was Martin O'Neill, self-confessed Celtic fan, who emerged to address the fans from the steps outside Parkway. Very, very much for waving in the rain. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's an absolute honour for me to be the manager here. I'm telling you that now. It's an absolute honour. No sooner had Martin signed and he was off to the European Championships, but he duly came back with the signature of Belgian internationalist defender Jos Valharn. It was an easy decision because uh, Celtic is a big club. And when people ask you, do you want to play for Celtic, it's, uh, for a football player like me, it's very easy to answer when it's a yes. The media were quick to question the signing, and this scepticism was mirrored when Martin paid out a record £6 million for out of favour Chelsea striker Chris Sutton. Celtic are a massive club with a, with a great history and uh, I'm sure Martin O'Neill's come up here and uh, we'll, we'll turn things around and, and uh, you know, hopefully Celtic will be pushing for the, for the league this year and, uh, and do well in Europe. You know, that, that's important certainly for the fans here. Um, personally it's important but I think more important is doing well for the, the, the team and uh, winning the league is, is of uh, paramount importance. If we were to believe the hype, 
it was going to be downhill from here on in. But we've never been known for our pessimism, and a lucky few of us even put a wee fiver on the treble. Hmm. On the playing front, pre-season was hectic, and Martin O'Neill had a quick crash course on his players. A whistle-stop tour took the boys to play friendlies in Dublin, Copenhagen and Leipzig, before heading back to Parkhead to face Bordeaux and the home fans. We were speaking earlier about how we hope this season is going to be so much better than last and the man who hopefully is going to lead us to the promised land. Put your hands together please and make some noise for Martin O'Neill. Boys and girls, Martin is going to tell us what he thinks of this wonderful Celtic reception he's had this afternoon. Well, I, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. First of all, I've seen it before. It's absolutely fantastic. I genuinely hope I can bring you some success, us and the players, which you've obviously needed for a long time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise one more time for our new manager, Martin O'Neill. Thank you. Bordeaux's pace and strength gave Martin O'Neill plenty of food for thought that afternoon in the sun. But one thing we could all take away with us was the return to form of a certain Swedish internationalist by the name of Henrik Larsson. And he places it beautifully in the corner. Those fans are delighted for Henrik Larsson. He has really struck in the sunshine. Didn't go for power. He went for precision. Larson is back. Boyd. Another useful looking ball. Larson there. Gets away from his marker. Larson brilliantly across. Burchill can't miss. Mark Burchill with a goal for Celtic, but made by Henrik Larson. Pure Larson skill. Burchill applied the finishing touch. Three days later, and the boys turned out again to take on West Ham and old favourite Paolo De Cano. Here's the sub, Gary Charles. Lovely little flick on that. Must be on it. A glorious goal by De Cano. Johnson and Petrov scored to give us the victory. It's Lawson. Great chance for Lawson. Must be. Yes. Good position now for Petrov. Larson, great play. No offside. Could have been a second. It is. That's a glorious goal. But all thoughts were on the kickoff of the league, which followed just five days later. The opening day of the season saw the Celts travel to Tayside for a meeting with Dundee United. The fans were desperate to get the campaign going and get the first three points in the bag. And bang, it happened. As if to silence the critic's speculation about his fitness, Larson netted the opener, and new boy Sutton fired home the winner. Henrik was named man of the match, and O'Neill said to him after the game, I thought you were a good player, but I was wrong. You were a fantastic player. We could have told you that, Martin. Three more points were bagged against Motherwell the next weekend, with a Celtic team reduced to nine men showing the kind of steely determination that was sadly lacking last season. Martin O'Neill's first competitive match at Celtic Park as Celtic manager. In from McNamara. And back in from Lambert to Petrov. 
It's a wonderful strike by Stylian Petrov. And that had Martin O'Neill on his feet. He was bouncing up and down at Tannadice last Sunday. A lovely touch on his chest to control the ball. And the hook shot was well away from Andy Gorham. Next up, we travel to Luxembourg to meet Jeunesse Desch in the qualifying round of the UEFA Cup. Not a big team, but a match memorable for more than its 4 0 victory. Lambert tries his luck, finds Larson. Good interplay between Larson and Sutton again as he goes for the return ball. Jasper Ratchik! And Celtic lead. 36 minutes it's taken, but finally the deadlock is broken. And the Ratchik, who's been as dangerous as any of the Celtic players in the opening period, deserving the goal. Now Sutton. Wonderful through ball as well. Maracic, that is a stunning goal made by Sutton, executed by Maracic, and Celtic finally get a second. Chris Sutton was outstanding, and selfishly creating three of the four goals. It was early days, but we could sense it. Sutton and Larson were a dynamic combination, capable of bringing us the success we craved. The star of the show, though, was Bobby Petter. Brimming with confidence under the influence of O'Neill, a new player was in evidence. Things were starting to look good. I knew exactly what I could do, and uh, I just knew that uh, I just needed a chance, and um, to, you know, to prove what I can do, um, and that's what I've been doing this season. Well, Martin O'Neill is uh, well encouraged uh, encouraged me to just go at people. Better driving forward, looks to be going a solo run. Right footed, another chance for Celtic. Uh, good effort by Bobby Petter. My strongest assets are uh, just uh, beating people and get crosses in, and that's what uh, you know, he encouraged me to do. And uh, for me, it was just to get and pick it up and, and do it actually, do what I'm, I'm good at. Plenty of space for Petrov. Bobby Johnson looking for a little bit of support, gets it, not surprisingly, from Lambert. And here's Larson, yes! Larson, who's been able to elude the defenders with the greatest of ease, left with nobody covering him there. And he accepted it as a gift. Look at this. All in his own heel. And he kept remarkably composed. Larson, no offside. Johnson, can he put it away? He can, yes! No cover for Johnson. He picked it up and drilled it away. Celtic in the lead with about uh, 18 minutes of the game remaining. With the point secured against Kelly, the boys headed down the M8 to Tyne Castle. But Chris Sutton showed he was worth every penny of the six million and you'll paid for him. Celtic menacing again. There's Sutton. He's done it. Chris Sutton scores his second goal for the club in the right position at the right time and answering his critics in the south in the most positive manner. Picked up well by Peter. Look at the curl in the ball, but the big fella had to be in the right place at the right time. Oh, there he is again! Sutton with a hand. if he gets as much accommodation in the air as his heart's defence has given him. Amaratchik. There he is again, almost in. Lambert just bounced in. There was a deflection, I think Larson might have got a touch. Lambert took it beautifully, drilling it in. Tomorrow, that's a bit of ball, and Hearts have pushed forward. They have gaps again. Sutton, there's Marabche, going around the outside. Yeah, it is, that does it. He took that so well, just when Hearts were getting back into the game. 4-2 to Celtic, and the boys maintain their unbeaten record. An excellent foundation for the first old firm clash of the season. Just away. But before that, back to Europe. 
In the return against Jeunesse at Celtic Park, Mark Burchell scored the fastest hat-trick in European history with goals in the 12th, 14th and 15th minutes. Mark Burchell scores for Celtic. Long ball forward, it's well taken by Burchell. Can he get a shot on target? Here he does, another goal by Mark Burchell. Simon Lins, eager to get involved as well. Good ball forward for Berkovic. Another opportunity for Celtic. Berkovic laying it back. Hat-trick for Mark Burchell. 14 minutes gone. And Mark Burchell scores his hat-trick. What an amazing start. The boys added another four goals to Burchell's three. Seven nothing on the night, eleven nothing on aggregate. A fantastic display. Passage was secured to the next round, but everyone's optimism was on hold ahead of the season's first meeting with Rangers. The 27th of August 2000. A date to remember for a long, long time. The Trinity of O'Neill, Steve Walford, and John Robertson was in place at the helm. The sun was shining, and the stage was set for an epic battle. Will we ever tire of watching this? Old firm games, sometimes unbelievable, often uncompromising, always unmissable. And after East Anglian, North West and London derbies, it's high time Chris Sutton stopped pussyfooting around. He's about to discover the real thing, the mother of all derbies. This game is what it's all about. It's why players play, it's why supporters support, and Stuart Dougal says it's why referees referee. I will imagine it. It's often been debated down the years as to which was the best old firm game, but it's quite simple, really. The best old firm game is the next one. It gets to you like that, and the next one is here. Yeah, both managers have been trying to play it down, in, but uh, this is a biggie. Psychologically, this is a biggie. A Celtic win today would signal a rebirth under Martin O'Neill. A Rangers victory, well, it would let them play in the high psychological ground, and they've really had Celtic in a psychological arm lock over the last decade. Bobby Petter with an early surge on his old firm debut. And he'll get a free kick. Well, that's what Martin O'Neill will be this afternoon, Bobby Pettit full tilt here down the left-hand side, clearly tripped there, and he gives Celtic a free kick, well, in fact, Stuart Dougal's given the corner. Maracic sends it in, and Stubbs and Larson are there, and it's turned in by Chris Sutton! A gift from God for Chris Sutton. Lorenzo Amoruso screaming at the, at the stand side linesman for offside there. It sets up nicely for Sutton at the back post. I think he's on. Two Rangers players on the goal line. It breaks perfectly for him. Stefan Kloss with no chance whatsoever. And as you see there, he's well onside. And Celtic, Chris Sutton and Martin O'Neill have the start of their dreams. Celtic seeking a second, Maracic sends it in, and they have a second! And it's Petrov, who wasn't picked up, and it gets better and better for Martin O'Neill and for Celtic, a quite incredible start. Well, this is a deplorable marking here at the back post from Rangers. Stelian Petrov just runs off from Ander Rickson. Good ball in by Maracic, but the marking is woeful there. Plenty of pace in the ball, into a great area for Petrov to come and attack it. But Rickson, well, he fell asleep. Maracic could be in. And they're queuing up here. It's another one for Paul Lambert. Three for Celtic. And in paradise, this is the stuff that Celtic dreams are made of. Bobby Petter was fouled white right. He let the play go on, claims for offside. Maracic clearly on though. Checks back, has the presence to pick out the supporting Lambert. Amoruso can't get close enough to him to close the shot down. Maracic has time to look up, he sees Lambert. And Lambert could not have struck it any sweeter. 
And well, it's mission impossible for Rangers now, Ian. Larson. Oh, he's in! Henrik Larson! That is sensational! He missed all four open games last season, but he rather enjoys making up for lost time. World class. Well, that is world class, Ian. A special goal from a very special player. Chris Sutton does magnificently well in the first place to win it over Amoruso. Larson on his way, look at that skill. And he has the confidence, the composure, and the technique to chip it over Stefan Kloss. Look at the arrogance in that finish. That, as you say, is the mark of a world-class player. Petter delivers. Larson's header! He's done it again! It's a double for Henrik Larson! It's number five for Celtic! Well, once again, it's a wonderful goal, Ian, but once again, you have to question the marking in the back for Rangers. Good delivery, whipped in by Petter, but look at the room that Henrik Larson has. Barry Ferguson, the nearest to him, and he's three yards off him. And it doesn't get any easier for strikers than this. Lot of work still to be done though, and Larson applies the deathest of headers to find the corner, but he should have been marked tighter than that. Petter now has released Stepan Mahi. Have Celtic got another one left in them? Sutton is there! Yes, they have! Sutton scores! It's six of the best for the very best today! Celtic! It's a great strike of goal, Ian. Because he can't have much left gas in his tank, but he still makes sure he's at the back post when the ball comes in here. And he has to make up a lot of ground. You see him on the far side there. Times are run to perfection, drifts off Amor Russo. One touch is enough. And what an old firm debut for Chris Sutton. Martin O'Neill said all he lacked is confidence. Well, he certainly won't lack it now. He's a hero in the stand of Glasgow today. We always try to play as a team, but today we were really on fire. Everybody wanted really to win, as you always want, but today things went our way. No, I mean, you probably sense it when you come through the doors and now the manager's installed a, an unbelievable, I don't know, it's just a, an air of confidence, as you've said there. He, he makes you play better and uh, he, he makes you want to win. He's got enough of a will to win and uh, it's really good into the players and hopefully if we can maintain that, you know, you never know. I mean, it's a great, great win. Uh, you know, I know the feeling between the clubs and it's great to be a part of a winning you know Celtic side but uh, you know the main thing is, is is for us to win the SPL this year and uh, you know it's a good start I mean these, these derbies are important um, and it's, it's good for us to come out on top and you know maybe this year if we keep winning games they'll be playing catch up with us your beauty I was sitting there gobsmacked as the boys just kept banging them in one two three it's only 12 minutes and there was Martin O'Neill leaping in the air, and every time he leapt up in the air, our hearts leapt with him. That man knows how to deliver. And scoring more than five goals against Rangers for the first time since 1957 was the way to do it. Unbelievable. But true. Good things come in threes, so they say. And after Butch's hat trick and putting six past the Jers, her first run out in the CIS Cup led to another record for the boys. A 4 0 victory over Wraith Rovers was the first in our history to have all Englishmen on our score sheet. Alan Thompson made his debut and found the net along with Sutton and Tommy Johnson, who netted a double. No slip up so far, and everything to play for. At the end of the day, you paid to play football, and I wasn't playing football at Villa, and um, I love playing football, and that's all I wanted to do. So when I had a chance to come and join Celtic, you know, it's, that was that was good enough for me. I mean, it's been dragging on for a few weeks, and uh, I'm just delighted everything's gone through now, and I can, I can get on with playing football. I know a few of the boys, I know a few of the boys, and I know they've um, they've just uh, brought a, a great manager in, in Martin O'Neill, and um, he's going to take the club forward in leaps and bounds. All I want to concentrate on doing is getting in a Celtic team and everything might come from there and if it does come after that then that's great but first and foremost I just want to play well for uh, Celtic.
As was the case all season, the fixture list was congested, and it was straight back into league action and a momentous day for us all. At Paradise, on the 9th of September, we beat Hibs 3-0 to go top of the league, a position we revelled in until the end of the season. Larson, the man who was still the subject of debate over his fitness, netted yet another two goals. We all looked forward to him being fully fit. Larson not picked up by Hibbs. And when it was lofted in by Lubo Moravchik, Henrik Larson was waiting to pounce. Henrik Larson can still be a threat from midfield, as Hibbs are about to find out from Lambert and Birchall. And 3 0. He's done so much damage up front as Henrik Larson to Hibbs this afternoon. Now he does it from the midfield. It was another double from the Swede that gave us a 2 0 victory over Helsinki in the first round proper of the UEFA Cup. Neat little cutback. That's a good ball and it's there. Larson in the air once again. Almost 15 minutes gone and it's the exquisite judgment of the man in the air that makes it look so easy, although it never is. Navaravchik. Sutton, little ball inside, and that's it, second goal. Larson plonks it away with the greatest of ease. This was ten in a row for Martin O'Neill, and an opportunity for the world of football to witness the fantastic understanding gelling between Yalbi and Valharn at the back. Four days later, and it was a treble for Larson in his third double in a row, scoring both goals in a 2-1 victory at Dunfermline. But it wasn't an easy game. The three points came our way with just five minutes to go. It's Stevie Crawford, and it's 1-0 to Dunfermline, and what a shocker for Celtic. Here's Paul Lambert, lovely 1-2, Lambert goes down, and a penalty to Celtic, would you believe? It's Henrik Larsson, and it's 1-1, and once again, a perfect penalty from a perfect player. Well, Martin O'Neill couldn't have asked for a better response in. And once again, it's a fine penalty under pressure. Has been known to go for power, Henrik Larsson. And just strokes it away, right and back, going the wrong way. Larson. Oh, lovely little touch from Larson and Thompson back to Henrik Larson, who's onside. And Henrik Larson scores. And Celtic may just make it 11 wins on the spin after all. But my word, they've had to work mighty hard for it. Well, Deferman claiming for offside. Henrik Larson wasn't asking any questions. He was quite happy to play on. And it'll be interesting to see this again. Larson involved in the beginning of the move with the back heel, continues his run, and as he's played in, he's onside there, I think. And he has the composure and the class to tuck it away. Created and finished by Henrik Larson. And he wasn't asking any questions, he got on with the job there. Alan Thompson, who played him in, wrong foots the keeper, and he wasn't going to miss from there on in. Even though Dunfermline put up a good fight, there was a real air of security about Celtic's performance. We knew we had a team that would fight tooth and nail until the final whistle. And that's what wins you championships. A 1-0 victory over Dundee at home, and we retained a 100% league record ahead of the return UEFA tie in Helsinki. Smith getting there. But once again, every time they pop the ball out from right about the 18-yard line, it's falling to a Celtic foot. Hence the constant pressure. Larson. Thompson trying to get it to that left foot of his. And that's it. Petro opens the scoring. Coming in from the back there. A 
and Nick Skimming caught out of position. No cover for the goalkeeper and the young Bulgarian from Celtic in the lead. I make it 17 minutes into the second half and the constant pressure paying off. If you keep at a defence like that, eventually their organisation will break down and it did on the left-hand side. No cover. Result, 1-0. Finland may have been cold, but the atmosphere was on fire when we lost two goals to force the tie to extra time. The heat was most definitely on when with a dreaded penalty shootout looming, £6 million man Sutton fired home to clinch the tie on aggregate. Up goes Larsen towards the goalkeeper. Didn't seem too confident about that, the pressure is still on, Petrov. There's a shot, that's it! They've done it! They badly needed that. Sutton coming in there. Timely intervention. They worked very hard for it. And that's as important to go, both in terms of prestige and financially, as he's scored since he's come to Celtic. The next round would bring a rematch against Bordeaux and a chance to battle to stay in Europe beyond Christmas for the first time in 17 years. With the beginning of October and our first match back in league action, we dropped two points against Aberdeen. Swept and it goes, that's it! Henrik Larsson does it again! Ten-man side couldn't capitalise on Larsson's goal and we watched our 100% league record slip away. Still, there were lessons to be learned. and Martin O'Neill hadn't disappointed us yet. If we had been delighted with O'Neill's acquisition so far, the debut of a GAT against St Mirren surpassed that. His pace alone was well worth the 10 bob he paid for him. Well, in today's transfer money, it was about that. I think I proved myself in, with Fabianian and uh, started to do well with them. But Celtic is a big club and I think everybody would like to play this team. Larson, a GAT comes in. Can he put it away? Once again, opened up there by Larson. He did everything right. And the crowd were willing him to put this in the back of the net. I'm not believe the first time, but after when the manager of fun says OK. And to cap it all, our old rivals across the water dropped points. Thompson hovering on the edge of the box, and that's in. Sutton gets his head to it. Well, that was coming. The pressure mounting and floating the ball high into the penalty has been causing this defence no end of trouble. And with the best uh, of efforts of Turner, it couldn't be kept out. Sutton rising up uh, brilliantly there. All it required was a touch. Seventh goal of the season for the man. Larson with serious intent. Ryan puts it in, it's there! Well, I said they had to relieve the tension and they've done it brilliantly. We were climbing out on top of that league table and to every fan in the terracing, nothing was going to stop us. Celtic were more determined than we'd seen them for a long, long time. And as if they needed to prove anything else to us, they did anyway. With points won in difficult conditions at Perth, and at home to Dundee United. And it goes, and that's it! Larson again! Henrik Larson has this ability to pick his side up. 
David Aberdeen, almost exact replica of the way he put it in the net at Picardre. As I was saying, they had this uh, defence covered so very well. And at a vital time, 11 minutes before halftime, up he pops again in a cluster of players and made it look ridiculously simple after all the hopping and popping in front of goal that preceded it. This was Lassie's supposedly unlucky 13th goal of the season. Oh, if only they'd known. And when Alan Thompson fired home the second half... Beautifully inside, that's a great goal! Picked up beautifully by Thompson, reading from that deep position. Celtic were now 12 points clear of Rangers at the top of the table. No matter how well you're doing in the league, a big time in Europe brings a few butterflies. Bordeaux were a good side, and we all remember the pre-season trouncing back in July. And lurking in the back of everyone's mind was Larson's leg break in Lyon the year before. Needless to say, what a match. This was a fantastic Celtic performance, and I don't suppose anyone needs reminding who got the equaliser for us. The Bordeaux fans making plenty of noise behind that goal, and the set piece ends up with the opening goal. And it's Christophe Dugani who gives Bordeaux the lead. 22 minutes gone. First set piece, first goal. And Celtic couldn't keep him out at the near post. Didier Agat heading for the byline, turns the ball in. It's Diabate that's there, and that must be a penalty kick. And it is. Tremendously quick feet from Henrik Larsson, which won the penalty for Celtic. Bordeaux protest. But no doubt about it, Gordon. I thought it was a penalty. Henrik Larsson seen them not given to be fair, but the referee was very quick to point to the spot. They're complaining about it still. But you can see here, here the defender takes a touch. Larsson comes across, robs him, and the challenge comes through, and he's, he's made contact. Henrik Larsson just gets a little touch in front of him. Look at this. Just takes it, just knocks him over. So, Henrik Larsson, who won the penalty kick, will now take it. And scores! That's a golden goal for Celtic. 1-1, and Martin O'Neill celebrations 25 minutes gone Romy went one way the ball went the other Celtic back on level terms yeah superbly cool Henrik Larson keeps on scoring goals penalties or otherwise but he uh, took that so well and as you said a golden goal very important European football nowadays over two legs that you score away from home vital from their point of view and uh, puts them right back in this game and and probably uh, makes up for the mistake they made at that losing that first goal and Martin O'Neill delighted the away support in Bordeaux was simply extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Not only did the French people uh, themselves feel that it was extraordinary, I did. And the, the vocal support that we got, and I'm telling you, and I don't want to sound sycophantic about this here, but they did as much as anything to get as a result out there. Superb. But there was still important business to take care of on the domestic front. Three days after Bordeaux, it was off to third part, and a six-goal thriller in the league. Or was it really seven? Bobby Petters, corner, and Stevie Woods was flapping at it, and Mialbi has managed to bundle it in. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Johan Mialbi, Celtic, take an early lead. Elliot once again showing that he's very good in the air. Spencer with McCulloch waiting for the centre. Is it going to go in eventually? It is. And it's Adams and Motherwell celebrate an equaliser. In it comes eventually from Spencer. And it's in from Lee McCulloch. Motherwell are 2-1 up and have Celtic met their match. Alan Thompson whips it in. Larson is there. was in the right place at the right time, 2-2. Alan Thompson's corner. Oh, it's an awkward one! And did it cross the line? Mialbi felt that it did. He was fuming there, Mialbi. And it uh, 
is not going to count, but Celtic really should have done. Yeah, I'd like to see this one again. Well, was this a goal? That's the question. And it comes, Stevie Wood in no man's land. Well, that's over the line. That is over the line for me. It wasn't even <laughs> close, was it? Kamara. And he's got it back here. And can he get it back again? He can. Jackie McNamara! Oh, yes! What a glorious goal for McNamara! Celtic should have been 3 2 up earlier. They are now. That's a wonderfully constructed goal. And all of the credit has to go to Jackie McNamara. Two beautiful exchanges here on the edge of the box. The first was Petro. The second with Larson, who does well to get it back to him. Not convinced he strikes the shot perfectly at all. But Stevie Woods is wrong-footed, and it trundles in to the corner of the net. One touch and then the strike, and I'm not convinced they caught that one well at all, but he won't be complaining. And given the one that Johan Melby had disallowed, no more than Celtic deserve, I suppose. Well, Goodman invites the challenge, he makes the run into the perfect area. And that is pretty conclusive for me here. His body contact, his right arm's up. Not a great deal in it, but enough for Hugh Dallas correctly, I think, to point to the spot. It's Brannan, and it's 3-3 in a quite captivating contest. The replays in the telly confirmed what we all knew. Mialbi's goal should have counted. But the luck was with Motherwell and they fought hard for the three each draw. However, we were still in a fantastic position. Top of the league and then with a shout in Europe. This was shaping up to be our year. The 1st of November saw us at Tynecastle for the CIS Cup quarter-final. Our confidence in the Terrace oozed and when Neil fielded the three youngsters, Craney, Smith and Healy, our faith in their ability was 100%. Just kept in, Kirk has got a bit of pace about him, did very well and Balkaran's in position. There's Juan Joe, penalty kick. Juanjo taken out there, reset, whom we complimented for his tackling earlier in the game, and he takes with a dragging leg. And in the eye of the storm, Colin Cameron. Great responsibility. And he puts it away. Hearts have taken the lead. Colin Cameron did remain cool after all. A lucky little break. That wasn't a bad ball at all. Now coming in there with the left foot. Oh, it's a great goal. Trenny. A superb strike by the youngster. It wasn't the easiest of balls to take, but I did talk about that great left foot of his earlier in the day, and here is ample proof of it coming up now. It really was a great strike, but look at the step over took the Hearts defence with surprise, but even then, he still had to hit a good shot, and it was a really good strike, he kept his head, knew what he was doing, kept his eye on the ball, controlled the shot, superb strike, good ball from, good work from Tommy Johnson initially, there's a step over it through the, the Hearts defence, and lovely striking, lovely hit into the net. That's a nice little ball through, that's a great goal! Tremendous finish by Smith. And the youngster who was foiled earlier on took that with remarkable maturity. It was a lovely pass from Mike Namara, wasn't it? Uh, Jimmy Smith has got away from the two defenders, beautiful ball. One touch, ball in front of him, tremendous strike. 
Well, Look you know, it, it wasn't the easiest ball to take either with the two defenders no, well, converging right. on him. He gave himself that little bit of room, stole away from the two defenders. Super straight from that distance. Petric. Miss Wanjo, is he elusive enough? Fulton, that's not a bad ball, and away by Wilhelm again. Nielsen, the penalty kick. The referee had no doubt about that, and Wilhelm, I think, is the culprit as he goes round here. Up went the arms. On the blind side of the plane, you could see him hooking it away. And the second penalty to Hearts. There were no complaints that time. And could Jonathan Gould outguess Cameron this time? He can't, the same corner, and Hearts are back on level terms in this remarkable cup tie. And so the jam was forced the game to extra time. The boys had certainly put in a good shift in the first 90 minutes, but somehow they managed to find an extra gear and three more goals put the tie beyond any doubt emphatically. Johnston. McNamara had a quick look away across the field, decided on the shorter one, but Thompson makes it for him. Alpeda. Johnson with the header, this could be it! It is! Healy puts it away! Johnson... Tries to put it in right, but it's there! What object! Well, well, well! Suddenly, the youngster slept. Again, we had praised him so much. He let Moravchik get away, and that finishes it. Credit to Lubo Moravchik for creeping in at the back. And a touch of rawness there from the youngster. Ball watching, and they suffered. As McNamara Hughes gone to left and he does it again. That's a glorious goal. They are rubbing it in now. Now, as Celtic fans, we all have one common dream, and that's playing for the jersey. But when you realise that just ain't gonna you want nothing more than to watch a young lad come through. And what a joy it was to see that threefold when each of the young boys scored. <laughs> Tremendous. Just like the old days of the quality street kids. Well, Adam to Agat. Inside, then outside. Away from Mitchell. Deflected off, Ali Mitchell, and here's a chance. And Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead. Not picked up as he came in at the far post. There was a deflection on the way as the ball came in. And Alan Thompson opens the scoring. Well, it came at the end of the best spell of football in the game. Rob, both ends, Kamara had very good attacks. But Ugbots a deflection across the Kelly defence, but there was three Celtic players all going for it. Kamara was standing still at the same time. Look at this, there's deflected. Larson's missed it there. Thompson has done very well to sneak in at the back post and put that away. Another three points secured against Kelly lined us up nicely for what would be our biggest test of the season so far. The return against Bordeaux. From Moravchik, supported by Petta. Trying to get in behind Bobby Petter, good run. The cross was disappointing, as was the header clear, and Moravchik has scored! A brilliant finish from Moravchik. And Celtic have what could be an all-important goal. Even the corner flag gets a kiss. Yeah, that was so important for Celtic to get the breakthrough. Good work, we have to say, from Petter on the left-hand side. It was Moravchik that fed him originally, too. The ball was not cleared all that well, and uh, he's got a race with Larson. Larson did the right thing, stepping out of the way, and he's just driven it. I think the keeper's unsighted, Rob, to be honest with you, because he's a bit slowing it down, having just made a marble save. Look at that, it's just come round the edge of a defender and off the post. Terrific shot, keeping it down low. David Gemali. Away from Johnson. Here's a chance for Butless. And it's a goal for Lillian Laslond. 
Celtic Park is silenced. 11 minutes left. And there's the sucker punch, and that could be the goal that takes this time into extra time. Bastos pass. Here's Laszlon shooting chance. Lillian Laszlon for Bordeaux. And that could be the end for Celtic. 25 minutes gone of stoppage time. The celebrations are for Bordeaux, 3-2 up on aggregate, and Celtic now need two goals. Yeah, that's a killer blow at this stage, very hard to come back from. You think he's been it always way. seems to happen in Europe, say, but just when the finishing line was within grasping distance, I mean, the match was stolen from us in a late injury time winner. The blow was sickening, but the fans walked out of the stadium with their heads held high. We might have been out of Europe, but we were still top of the league and playing for the cup. I've been involved in a lot of football throughout my years, a lot of European football as well too, and that was hard to take. We absolutely, we dominated the game from start to finish. We were absolutely fantastic. I could not ask for a nine more, couldn't ask for a nine more from the crowd, couldn't ask for a nine more from anyone. And in a great, great night, we've ended up getting beaten. I had no idea how, but that's the game. Don't get me wrong, Bordeaux were a very good side, but for long, long periods in the game, we made them second rate. And we haven't been able to finish the game off. We got a goal thoroughly deserved. And uh, we have a couple of chances to go, uh, you know, make it, it, just put it beyond them. And they've scored with virtually their first time that they've broken into their penalty box, what, 78, 79 minutes, whatever it may be. Our confidence was boosted by the debut of big keeper Robert Douglas and 10 goals past St. Johnson and Harps in less than a week. Thompson's got a good left foot, of course. Might get it in yet. Makes it aside, and that's a great goal, second. Yes, he took it so well. And he simply wore down the St. Johnson defence. Well, that's him, yes. Cleanly taken. He's hardly been in the game. But then, that's a mark of quality. That's all sin. Oh, what a goal. For a moment, I thought that was going to hit the post, or that the goalkeeper did. No wonder he's delighted. Silla did that well. Dasovic didn't. Thompson must put it through here. Now then, Larson ought to put it away, and he does with delightful ease. When he gets a chance like that, he makes it look ridiculously simple. Of course, it never ends. Severin again. Here's Colin Cameron. A brilliant goal by Cameron. 13 minutes gone. It's been all Celtic so far. And that's the sucker punch. Here's the free kick. In from Tom Boyd. Petar finding a way through. Valharan! Superb from Yas Valharan. His third goal for Celtic, and that's the best of the lot. Hearts had the lead for only two minutes. Set up by the cutback from Petar. And you won't see a better precision finish than this. Alan Thompson having a look at the penalty box. Sutton and Larson and Mialbi and Valharan all waiting. Headed away by Severin. On the left foot of Moravchik! 2-1 Celtic. Ten minutes left in the first half. The scorer of the equaliser, Valharan. Twisted down by Larson for Petrov. Agat, Henrik Larson. Off Niemi! Henrik Larson, 3 1. Mistake this time by Niemi. In again from Moravchik! 
It's Johan Mialbi. Denied earlier by the heroics of Niemi. But he wasn't going to be denied this time. The short corner played in by Moravchik and Hart's guilty of not picking up their men. Fulton's lost it to McNamara. Johnson and Henrik Larsson, chance for number five. It is five. It trickled over the line, but that won't bother most people inside the stadium. And it won't bother Henrik Larsson. Now 21 goals for the season. Larsson's pass. And Didier Agat turning it into an excellent one. Is it to be six? It is. Stylian Petrov, the happy half dozen for Celtic. Celtic Rangers are the two biggest clubs in Scotland, and I was, I was pleased to be linked with them both. But uh, when I spoke to Martin, that was it for me. Yeah. Great save. Good reach, Ron. I had quite a warm welcome for the boys. Uh, came back for training. My shoes were all taped up. The, the socks were cut in half. Uh, the boxer shorts were deep heated. But uh, I'm quite into that. That's my kind of. I can appreciate that. It's a long four and a half years, and I think I know a couple of the guys. So. Uh, it's a great spirit again, you know, there's a good bunch of boys in there, so that's the main thing. O'Neill's team was beginning to take shape and the tie against Rangers at Ibrox was eagerly awaited. And so to Ibrox. If you told us what the result was going to be that day, there's no Celtic fan who would have believed it. Get this over with quick, will you? It was just as the man had been telling us all along, there's no room for complacency and lessons had to be learned despite the positive results so far. But all credit to the boys coming back from such a hefty defeat. Battling through atrocious conditions, they won a hard fought point against Hibs just three days later. Next up was Dunfermline at home and the boys went on to show their mettle after the Pars took the lead inside the first minute. Nice little touch there, just overdoing it though. I dare again, and that's in. Then Fernand have scored in exactly 54 seconds. It's Moravchik. Put that through, good play, Johnson. Now Petro from the run, and just beyond, and that's it. Beautifully struck by Moravchik, the equaliser. Confirmland left, woefully exposed on the right-hand side, acknowledges the adulation of the crowd there. Now, this had to be kept down. Good run by Petrov. This is an excellent ball across the face of the goal. Now, that's not the easiest of chances. I've seen a lot missed from that. But he kept it simply well, though, drilled into the corner. Skinner. 
But having said that, that was still a very, very tight angle. Well, I think the reputation of this man preceded him. Because Skinner seemed to be overawed by his presence. But here is where he had to be deadly accurate and cool, and that combination put Celtic 2 1 up after 20 minutes. There's the corner, and Larson almost gets it. That's a goal, though. Johnson gets it. He'll be delighted with that. Substitute today for Chris Sutton or coming in in place of Chris Sutton rather and down he went had to be courageous to get down to that and as I said there's now about uh, just under 11 minutes of the game remaining and that should do it At Dane's Park a week later all eyes were on Neil Lennon in his much awaited debut when Neil had fought a long battle to secure his arrival at Paradise, and he did not disappoint. Lennon was the missing piece of this jigsaw. And the big picture? The treble. With five games to go before the break, we were desperate to go into the split and pole position. A known goal unnerved us cancelling out Petrov's early opener. But the boys battled on, and Didier Agat picked the best possible moment to net his first goal for Celtic. In the dying seconds of an intense fixture, Didier snatched a goal and gave us victory. What a nail biter. I think the squad's really strong, uh, a lot better uh, than what I thought, and uh, we've certainly improved even more since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we look very, very resolute, physically very strong. You know, we've got that air of uh, confidence about us as well, and that comes obviously with not losing games. And, um, you know, even if we do go a goal down or whatever, you know, the, uh, you know, we, we still feel we can get ourselves back in the game. You know, we played in the 90 minutes and everyone's totally committed to each other. You know, even the boys coming off the bench are making big contributions. And, uh, you know, as a squad, it's as good as any I've been involved in. Things could only get better, and they did, when new boy Ramon Vega, making his debut after signing from Spurs, netted two in a 6-0 trouncing of Aberdeen. Alan Thompson's pass intended for Bobby Petter. And Henrik Larsson. It's taken only four minutes for Celtic to hit the front. Aberdeen opened up with ease. Up goes Ramon Vega. There he is! What a start! He made it clear as he wandered forward, Ramon Vega, that he wanted the ball played to him, drifted away from his marker, and as easy as you like. He's only been a Celtic player for 18 minutes in terms of on-field action. And this is his first goal for the club. Uh, full steam ahead for a gut. Johnson, Larson, surely this time. He had to get another one eventually, didn't he, Henrik Larsson? And Larsson makes it 25 goals for the season. His strike rate is phenomenal, although in truth he might well have had four or five by now here. Larsson's layoff. Good ball in from Alan Thompson. And Henrik Larsson onto it. That is sensational. A hat-trick for Henrik, and that was something special. It was Henrik Larsson who started it off with the layoff for Thompson, then he was off and running right around the Aberdeen defence, and what a blistering finish that is, with his right foot on the volley right into the top corner. The corner kick from Lennon, that's Vega! Ramon Vega does it again. Two goals on his debut, and now 5-0 for Celtic. Inside the last two minutes with Jamie Smith. 
It's six. And a second goal of the season for youngster Jamie Smith. Aberdeen in all sorts of disarray at this stage. And out badly here. With three matches to play before the split, Agat picked Celtic's first trip in ten years to Love Street to score his second with Henrik the King netting the winner and astoundingly his 100th goal of his Celtic career. The Boxing Day tie at Tannadice was beset with freezing weather and heavy snow, but nothing could stop four goals and a superb performance from Stylian Petrov. No hint of a New Year's hangover, well, on the pitch anyway. Sutton's double and Larson's double-double secured the points against Kilmarnock. Celtic's position nestling high at the top of the championship as they went into the split was assured. And Chris Sutton scores! Flicked on by Larson for Sutton, a neat back heel. Down goes Petrov. And Henrik Larsson scores number two. As the debates were going on about whether that was or wasn't the penalty, Henrik Larsson was untroubled as he tucked the ball away for his 29th goal of the season. Long ball from Mielby. Stretching out was Larsson, and here's Chris Sutton. A chance to make it number three. Well, that's got to go down as poor defending by Kilmarnock. Chris Sutton unchallenged to score his second of the game. His 13th goal for Celtic. That's a lovely pass with the outside of the right foot from Johan Mialbi. And here's Henrik Larsson to score his second goal. It's almost scoring by numbers. It's that simple for Celtic. 4-0. Poor pass from Dundala. And Kilmarnock on the back foot again. Thompson. Gets it back from Larson and Henrik Larson in for his hat-trick. Trick for Henrik and 5 0 for Celtic. Well, give us a smile, Martin. He's got to be happy with that. And the misery continues for Kilmarnock. Neil Lennon. Good ball from Larson to Maracic. Driven in low at the near post. Here's Henrik Larson. Could it be number four for Larson? It could. Six nil, Celtic. Unstoppable. And you just knew, despite the odds being stuck against him initially, that Henrik Larson would find a way to goal. He's done it so often. That was Gary Hay who missed it at the near post. Larson yet again applying the finishing touch and now for him 32 goals this season it's 6-0 Celtic three minutes left much talk was given to the title being won but O'Neill continued to remind us that there was still a long road ahead a journey however with a slightly lighter load that the euphoria of the season was marred by the shocking news of the illnesses of Alan Stubbs and Morton Vigost 
Stubbsy was stunned to learn of the recurrence of cancer, and Big Martin fell victim to Guillaume Barry syndrome, an illness which led him into intensive care. The support for the two cells was immense, and their determined fight to recovery and fitness was inspirational. During the winter break, Martin O'Neill whisked the boys off to the Florida heat, where they trained in the sunshine and got a chance to check out some American opposition. Some say a change is as good as a rest, but the pitch for the tie against the University of South Florida in Tampa was frightening, not relaxing. Still, the match gave Martin a chance to play around with his tactics in a closed-door match against the fledgling side. The highlight of the trip, though, was the match against Tampa Bay Mutiny in front of 4,500 Celtic supporters, euphoric at the rare opportunity to see the boys in action. The American support were treated to an inaugural airing of the new first team strip and a chance to see legend Valderrama in action. I've never experienced a winter break myself uh, all throughout the, the seasons in the Premier League, uh, both as a player and as a manager. And uh, so it is a wee bit strange and it will be very, very interesting to see how we, re we readjust when we come back again. The boys might have been in a break. But they couldn't leave the league behind as the presentation for the SPL manager and player of the month for Curtin Orlando in the superb training facilities at Disney's World of Sport Resort. No prizes for guessing that Martin O'Neill and Henrik Larsson were the recipients. Oh, obviously delighted, but uh, I mean, it just uh, shows how the team is playing because it gives me a chance to play well, get a, get a few goals, and uh, that's just, um, yeah, it's, it's for the whole team really, I think. So, a wee break in the sun to recharge the batteries ahead of part two of the season. The jungle drums were already beating to the tune of a possible treble. That was possible. And from what we'd seen so far, it was looking very possible. There wasn't a member of the backroom staff or a player or a supporter throughout the world not up for it. Or who didn't want to believe that it really could happen. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. I will do everything I possibly can. That's a glorious goal. That's a great save by Goal. a better precision finish than this. And Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club.